I'm Rick, joined by Nancy, as I so often am. And uh, let me just welcome our guests here tonight, Jenny, Will, Tim, and Mary. Hello, guys. Hi. Hey, hey, guys. Hey. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your week, out of your night to be here with us. Um, I'm just going to start right off the bat. You know, each of you has been on uh, Facebook Lives before. You've shared your success in the program with our audience before. Um, so we're not going to belabor it, but we also don't want to skip over that. So I'd like to just take a quick moment to recap your successes, if I could. And I'm going to, um, while I do that, let me just put up a little um, screenshot of all of you at once. Uh, that is your virtual round of applause. Do you guys all hear that? <laughs> no, yay. Wow. So anyone watching, I want you to just sort of absorb this slide for just a minute. And um, if you are so inclined to comment, then please do. All right, are you guys ready? Um, yeah. I might have. I might have. Uh, Rick, I just Rick, I just have to say, three hundred eighty-five pounds lost mm. with the wow. four people that we have got. That's incredible. Wow, it's just it's beyond words. It's incredible. So, just uh, again, we don't have time to go through everyone's story. If anyone is interested in that, just go back to previous events, and you'll find them. Guys, I'm going to challenge you. What is one word or phrase? If, if you had to limit it to that, that would describe your experience with HMR so far, what would it be? And as you're thinking about that, I'm going to just share with our audience that we actually asked this question in a previous event. <laughs> and eight to 10 minutes later, people were still <laughs> trying to, uh, share about what HMR has meant to them. So I am going to really ask you guys to raise your game and try to limit it to a phrase or, you know, keep it short. But uh, we'll, Tim, we'll get to the longer version later. Yeah, we will. So, Tim, your experience with HMR, can you capture it in a sentence? Sure. Life-saving transformation to happiness. <laughs> Ooh, That's pretty strong. Ooh, like it. Wow, Great. start off with a bang, man. I uh, right. Try and follow that, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, build on that. What would you say, Jenny? Um, I would definitely say that um, food has become fuel to become who I want to be instead mm -hmm. of how it used to be. I didn't have a healthy relationship with food. Now I have a healthy relationship with food and we're working together to achieve the things I want. What a difference. Ha yeah. have, going from an unhealthy to a healthy relationship with food. I, 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 I know you can't explain that in, in, a, in a sentence. That's amazing. Mary, uh, give, us, give us your shot at this. My little tagline is I got my life back during a pandemic. Oh, oh that's a good one. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Very meaningful. Uh, we'll wrap it up. Uh, learning to live instead of just existing. Oh, oh yeah. These are all awesome. Yeah. And boy, you certainly did uh, move some of us to tears with that very sentiment uh, in, in the episode that you were in a few weeks back, Will. It was one of the more powerful moments I remember during our Facebook Live events. So, and I'll try to go through it this time without having a nasal incident. Uh, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> so, so this time, I hopefully, I won't get so emotional and worked up that, you know, I, I give myself a nosebleed. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So Nancy, what are we covering tonight? Yeah. So maybe you can take the pictures down at this point so we can see everybody again. Yeah. But um, so you guys, we've invited you here tonight to discuss a particular mindset that you all share that's been really important in helping you accomplish everything you love. Nancy, I'm sorry. I got to interject. You just used the word mindset. I want to make sure we use that more than once tonight because it's, it's a very important part of the campaign that we have rolled out at HMR, the Healthy Me Revolution. We're gonna really unpack this whole concept of mindset and the kind of mindset that really puts you at an advantage uh, to accomplish results. So sorry, Nancy, I had to just sort of connect this whole discussion around mindset to the, our, our Healthy Me Revolution campaign. Yeah, thanks. And, and really this mindset is grounded in the fact that in order to accomplish like really big results with your weight and your health, you need to be open to the idea of stepping away from business as usual, right? I mean, Absolutely. let's face it, to be, you have to be open to doing some very different things in your life to get the amazing results that you want with your weight and your health. Absolutely. Very different leads to different. So yes. uh, Tim, Tim and Will, on our call last week, we had talked about tonight's discussion, the Healthy Me Revolution, this idea of this mindset and whatnot. We were so excited by how strongly both of you 
agreed with this premise. And then Jenny and Mary, you you watched that discussion and you both emailed some with us with some very enthusiastic follow up to that video that you watched. So let's can we linger on this point for just a minute right up front here, guys. So I'm going to ask each of you, but I'd also ask our audience to comment on this. And guys, we're going to get into a lot of details. You can kind of keep it higher level, kind of like short, just like we did with the um, the, uh, the, the your earlier comments. Um, if you think about it, keep um, the importance of being willing to embrace changes in your life in order to produce the changes that you've experienced in your weight and health. How important is it to be willing to embrace changes in your life to get those weight and health changes? Mary, how important is it to be willing to embrace I, change? I think that's the essential piece. I think it's a piece that was missing for me before because what I would do before was, was okay, how do I just lose some weight to get to a certain place so I can go back to normal? Yeah. And they're like that for me, that's what the revolution is about is normal changed. Like mm -hmm. I can't because people say to me now, they're like, oh, so you can go back to normal now. <laughs> well, if I go back to if I said if by normal, you mean what I did before. Well, if I do that, I'm going to go right back to where I was before. I'm and I said, so it's it's a new normal that's completely different than what it was before. Well, well said. That's really well said. Um, Tim, you want to add anything? Actually, I think uh, that was probably one of the great struggles for me is to get myself to the point where I would be totally open. I'm a nurse practitioner as my uh, occupation. And so I've learned a lot about health and, and what you should do. And I really had to be open to forgetting much of that stuff and mm -hmm. allow myself to hear the message that HMR has, because um, it's not what you hear from everything else but it works incredibly. And the thing that I really, that pulled me in was one, it's based on a lot of research over many, many years. And two, it um, has such a positive spin, but that it gets you to a point where you can maintain this for your life. So many of the other things, I, cause I try it a lot, um, will get you to a certain point and then it really doesn't think about how do you actually do this for the rest of your life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's deeply embedded in what this is. And that's why you need to change your life. It has to be a revolution or you'll get those same results. It's great. Mm -hmm. Nancy, I'd love, uh, Tim just said, you, you, you hear at HMR what you don't hear from everybody else. It brings yeah. up that whole counterculture concept that, yes. that has been resonating with us. Um, yeah. Great stuff, um, Will. Let me repeat yeah. the question for you. How important was it for you to be willing to embrace changes in your life in order to produce changes in your weight and changes in your health? You know, it's interesting when, when you first initially like asked me about joining this thing and you, and you talked about the idea of the healthy meat revolution being something you wanted to roll out, something you wanted to, to, uh, to share, it made me think about that word revolution first. And my first thought when it comes to that is, Weirdly, musicals. Um, you think about Hamilton. You think about the story of Hamilton. You think about Les Mis, the story of Les Mis. Yeah. You think about what a revolution is all about. Revolutions are, a change needs to be made and it's, and it's oftentimes hard, it's bloody, it is difficult. There is a fight that goes on. But what happens is once you see the change happening, you realize this is the reason why change had to happen. And when you start to see this with this program, um, like I mentioned before we got started, this is the same shirt you saw in that picture that you put up before. Yes. Uh, when you start to see the change happening, you realize that it's working. And if it's working, yeah. why is it working? And when you realize why it's working, you want to keep working at it and you don't want to lose the progress. And yeah, sometimes it might feel weird when, it, when the progress is not as much as you want. But then you realize when you look back, I'm a lot further than I was before and I'm a lot closer than where I want to be. Exactly. So you start to see the changes and you realize the fight is worth it. So keep plugging at it, keep going with it, keep moving forward with it because that change you want to see is possible if you keep fighting for it. That's mm. great. I, I agree completely. And I think of it like every success that you have, the little success you have on this is the, just the brick that you're building or the brick that you're using to build on to the next success, you know, until you build that lifestyle that you want. And that's the beauty I've found in the HMR program is the behavior changes 
they seem dramatic two years down the road. But when you're in phase one, it's just one little brick. Just focus on this one little thing. Simpl mm -hmm. They simplify it to the point where you're not overwhelmed. And I'm an overthinker. I'm an analyzer. And so that was kind of hard for me to do in the beginning. It was to not, okay, don't, let me find the calorie count. Let me find this. this. It's got to be, it's got to be harder than this. And when <laughs> I finally gave into the fact that I, I was putting all of my energies in the wrong direction and just put my energy towards just following this very simple plan. It wasn't until I came out that I started realizing how much it changed my behaviors, you know, and it wasn't as difficult because I had people along the way who helped me with strategy, who helped me with understanding, you know, what to focus on, what not to focus on. And it, it just, it just made it easier. So I had the willpower left over to be able to just follow the system. And like you know? Mary said, like Mary said, your normal starts to shift. Your normal yes. starts to change. So when you're yes. going to the grocery store and you're getting carts full of vegetables and fruit, <laughs> when before you would have all kinds of junk food in it, when, when people say you're, you're going to go back to normal, it's like, well, I'm in my normal. This yes. is my normal. I yes. want this to continue to be my normal. And you start fighting for that normal to be the normal and not go back to that, that old way of thinking, that old way of doing. And Will, exactly. you said that about going to the grocery store and what your, your cart looks like. And I had the experience, you know, I unload everything. It's on the belt. And the person behind me goes, oh, look at yours and all the pretty colors. And look at what I have. And I was like, <laughs> I was never that person. I was always the one standing behind with the, the arms full of crap. You know, <laughs> and now people are pointing out to like, oh, look how healthy her grocery cart is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mary, is it true you actually now uh, arrange the produce in attractive shapes on the conveyor belt? <laughs> it's taking it to the next level. I'm a chemistry teacher. I make it every time out of them. Out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> grapes are electrons. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to coordinate everything. I want to show a graphic that helps to um, sort of organize. It's really a two-part process that we're talking about here. And, and Will, I'm going to show this just because I'm trying my best to, to fight the urge to burst out in my best Jean Valjean imitation. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a little Les Mis insider stuff, guys. <laughs> to. Um, all right. So Nancy and I put this together. And Nancy, I think it's a fair, fair to say that we didn't necessarily push PowerPoint to its design limits with our slides. <laughs> we kept it pretty basic. <laughs> We kept it basic. Uh, so, but it says it all. We've been talking about, well, we actually covered all of it, but let me, let's just pack it down, pack it here. So you've got the fact that you guys have all experienced extraordinary results. And, and here we've just spent some time talking about the fact that to accomplish those results and to protect and sustain those results, you really are, to, to your own words, uh, practicing some out of the ordinary behaviors. Um, here's the rub with this, it seems to make perfect sense, right? When you look at this two-part process, even though most people want what's on the right here, the extraordinary results, people often really don't reflect on what it really means to, exactly. to break their old habits, what it really means to embrace new behaviors. And the reality is new behaviors are hard to do. And there, there are lots of reasons why. There are more than a few challenges that make it hard to embrace new habits and to develop new routines. So let's keep that graphic in mind. We're talking about doing new, practicing new things, unusual things given our culture, counterculture, out of the ordinary behaviors, yeah. things that just aren't typical. And they are hard to do. And that's part of what makes them so difficult. So let's, let's unpack this just a little bit, guys. Why are new behaviors so hard? Well, they're new. So that on, <laughs> on its own face, <laughs> on its own merits, that's why. But also the environment doesn't support it. And, and we really want to get to this. There are times when other people in our lives don't necessarily support our commitment to making healthy lifestyle changes. So let's sit for a minute with the environmental cultural challenges before we get to the influence of other people, the comments of other people, Nancy. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the environment just a little bit. I'm going to um, do a little bit of a quiz. Nancy, would you be so kind as to uh, pepper our guests with a couple of questions? Well, I'm, I'm ready with the questions. <laughs> Great. And I, I'm want ready. To, I want to invite our audience to get ready to type quickly because we're asking you yeah. the same question. So here it is. I'm going to start with physical activity. Here's the unfortunate fact of the matter. Today, we sit or lie down 
for more minutes and hours of the day than any other time in history. That's a fact. Nancy, what would you like to ask? So Jenny, I know you, I know you. <laughs> what would, how would you be doing with your weight if you were doing less than 500 calories a week in physical activity? And our audience too. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I, I'd be getting larger and larger just like I was. That's the simple fact. I've always loved exercising, but um, the simple fact is I'm going to be sore either way. And I would be sore sitting on my butt all day and, or I could be sore from an excellent workout. One made me proud. The other made me fat. So <laughs> Will, <laughs> how about, Will, how about for you? Less than 500 calories of physical activity. How would you that, be doing that, I, I would, I would not be doing well. Um, I definitely would not be. It, it's, it's interesting when you, when you go to it, like one of the, th the things that, that I've learned is that the pain that I feel moving around is because I've sat for so long. And mm -hmm. once you start moving, you realize you start feeling that pain of like, well, your body's like, whoa, what, this is not familiar. What are you doing? <laughs> and then you realize that after over time, when you keep going, that pain is no longer there. And it's a different kind of pain of, of increasing your, your, your body and increasing like what your body can do and pushing those limits, you know, and, and those are those kind of rewarding things that, 500 a week like i i was i would guess to say i didn't do 500 a week years ago and now it's it's hard to not do a day of walking that i'm like i, I don't feel right <laughs> you know so funny i'm hearing emotional benefits i'm hearing physical benefits not even talking about the weight just yeah. the whole emotional and physical benefits well, having seen tim's tim's right. posts, I, having seen tim's posts i have to be honest I, i'd be very concerned about your mental health tim yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i mean here's tim that, that does three-day hikes in the mountains so Absolutely. yeah awesome. so All yeah right. i don't think i'd want to be around you tim no offense <laughs> <laughs> All right, next next Why, step, we're going to get well, Mary involved here, Nancy. Yeah. So, my, my, right, right. Well, really <laughs> latest from the Produce for Better Health Foundation, the average American intake of fruits and vegetables is 10 or less servings per week. And it's self-report data. So you know what that means? Well, I had, uh, you know, apple cobbler. Oh, let me count the, the apples there, <laughs> blueberry pancakes. So less than 10 servings per week is a pretty good estimate there. Okay, I, I got to throw this to Tim here for a minute. So, okay. all right, Tim, you're now limited. No more than nine fruits and vegetables this week. How are you doing? I, uh, emotionally, it would be hard because <laughs> I'm so attached to them now. <laughs> I just, uh, I, I would not do well at all. I, I can do that in one day now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's becoming my norm. So I, and I know I wouldn't feel anywhere near as good as I did now. And you can do that really easy having that few if you eat out almost every meal. That'll yeah. take care of it. Like, yeah. what are you eating if you're not eating fruits and vegetables, right? I can see your stress level going. Mary, how about you? Same thing. No more. Yep. Nine. That's the limit. You can have I, no, no 1. more. About 1.5 per day, Mary. Yeah, I would, I would honestly have a problem because my body has started working the way it's intended to by eating all the fruits and vegetables. Yeah. And un, under my old way, like I had gallbladder problems. I had my gallbladder out over a decade ago. But then I had the problems after having your gallbladder out of, you know, issues. Anybody who's got <laughs> the gallbladder out knows what I'm talking about. But, you know, and I took a medication for it, but I'm a teacher and I had years where I wouldn't eat until I was done teaching for the day because oh. I, would, I couldn't risk having to run to the bathroom. And yeah. once I started doing this, it all fixed itself and the medication oh, no more and the and my body works the way it's supposed to so if you told me i couldn't have the fruits and vegetables now i'd fight you on <laughs> i'm about ready to feel that i would be attacked if i said this to i was somebody. gonna say you know i'm like i, I would be uh, and now I to get uh, <laughs> secret service protection all right Rick, 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 let's let's Rick, let's do the last one just mary it all fixed itself just what a quote <laughs> i know it did um, so again, what we're talking about are the typical behaviors, uh, the average American practices. This is the culture that we live in, okay? These are the default behaviors. We don't move much. We don't eat many fruits and vegetables. And now I'm gonna give you another one. The top sources of calories in the American diet come from, are you ready for this guys? Drum roll. 
burgers, <laughs> pizza, <laughs> mm-hmm. chips, dessert, desserts, and sweet snacks. You just described my old diet. Yeah. Let's see, what's the question on the on the heels of burgers, chips, desserts, sweet snacks, and pizza? I'll say, so again, what if those were your top sources of calories right now? Yeah. In your diet. Where the heck is nutrition? I'd be sick. No nutrition, right? <laughs> All right, I'm hearing no nutrition. I'd be sick. Jenny, what are you what's your comment? That was my diet before. And that's you why I, I had problems oh, yeah. with eating. Yeah. I had problems with fatigue. I had uh, I had you know, I was on medication. I mean, wasn't happy. It was looking to food to make me happy. Mm-hmm. And it didn't make me happy, you know? So and to go to your point, Jenny, the, the, the fatigue portion, it makes it a whole lot easier to not do the 500 calories of yes. physical activity <laughs> per week. Exactly. When, when round and round and round you go. And yeah. 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 Plus your body's not feeling the way you want. I mean, it's, it's so, you know, it's so fascinating, Rick, that every answer we got, was really relative to health benefits yes, and, or then, then really weight. I mean, it's understandable that you wouldn't be the weight you are right now with all of what we just said, but you were really going to how good you feel, the quality of your life with your mm-hmm. emotions and physically and how that would be different kind of going back to what yep. the average American like yeah. goes for. That's fascinating. <laughs> Can I make a comment real quick? And what's interesting about this is that when you look at all six of us here in the boxes, you have six different body types. You have six different body sizes. And I'm probably like the the heaviest weighing of the six of us and the largest of the six of us. But again, it goes back to that mindset of a year and some months ago, I was even bigger than this. And you think about, well, I'm seeing the results and I see where I want to go. I'd have no end game of a, of a poundage limit, but I feel how I feel, how I feel better about where I was before. And I want to explore the idea of feeling even better than I do now. Mm-hmm. So for those who are in phase one, for those who are just starting the program, for those who are looking, they're like, my goodness, like they, they're so much smaller than I am. They're so much tinier than I am. I, I don't, I, I wish I can get to that weight. And it's not even a mindset of thinking about, well, just get yourself feeling better. Just get your life back on track to, to a point where you can enjoy your life. Yeah. Because again, I might be the heaviest one on here, but I was a whole lot heavier than I was before. And I have a whole lot more energy now than I did over a year ago. And, and I still want to do more and I still think I can do more. So and it's, it's for those who might feel yeah. frustrated, for those who might feel discouraged, for those who might be looking like, but it's easy for them to say because they, they weigh this. Yeah. I lost over about 140 pounds. I'm still not where I want to be, but I'm a lot better where than when I was before. And, and you can too, if you just keep going. And yeah. it does shift from being weight loss to being finding out what your body's capable of. Yeah. I went from hey. being happy 5, 10, 15 pounds less to, oh my God, now that I'm here, I'm able to tie my shoes without um, having yeah. to get winded. I'm able to, you know, walk around the block without looking like, you know, I ran a marathon or anything, you know? And so I started exploring the things my body was able to do that had nothing to do. It had everything to do with losing the weight, but nothing to do with a certain poundage, Yeah, you know? Right. And that's what excites me even to this day with that. Yeah. Yeah. And you bring up the lifestyle issues and the changes of like, Will, I think you said it well, about how much better we feel and the things that we can yeah. do. And like a year before I started the program, I went to go visit my son. He would, lived out in Hawaii and I was so limited in what I could do (laughs) physically that I literally had to have wheelchair transportation between the gates and the airport because I could not walk from gate to gate. Wow. And now I'm like, oh, it's Sunday afternoon. I have a half an hour. Let me go walk two miles. You know, it's like, yeah, and you're leaving your sister behind, I might add. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mary, you really brought up a, a, an important point because it's something that I, I thought about this morning that I, I didn't even think I was going to share. But the, the picture that I had this shirt in was on a cruise with a friend of ours. And it was a conscious effort for me to make sure that me and my wife were down at the restaurant a few minutes before they got my friends got there or at the show a few minutes before they got there or at the deck party, but a few minutes before they got there because I didn't want them to hear how I was sucking wind and breathing hard 
trying to make sure I got there. Yes. So I want to get there early oh. so I can get my breath down so I can feel like I was normal to, to, to be able to have a good time with them. And now you have these situations where you're like, you, you look forward to walking, you look forward to moving, yes. you look forward to doing, you look forward, like I mentioned before, look forward to living in yeah. a different way and not having to worry about how do I pre-plan so I don't hold others back or I don't make others feel bad for me or I don't disappoint myself or my wife you know mm -hmm. those kind of thoughts shift if you allow your your this program to really take charge of how you see what you can do yep right yes. guys, yeah, I, rem I remember as a kid just um, as a, a young adult like if i tried to run i would my side would ache within you know 10 feet and now that doesn't happen. I, you know, I enjoy thing. golf now because I can walk the course at one time. I was like, oh, I'm too tired. I, this is exhausting. I, why am I doing this? So Nancy, for people who are new uh, watching uh, this event and, and, and don't know your history, just recap that you have a, a you're keeping off. Yeah, a lot so of I, I'm keeping off 60 pounds myself. So I know I look small, but I really was 60 pounds heavier. It's been and I've kept it off for a long time now. It's been over 40 years. So there's a lot of hope. And, you know, I'm. I, I like to think I'm aging well, uh, you know, which I want to do. I want to be 90 and chipper. So <laughs> you are not going to bring up that you beat me on the stair climbing machine. Well, I was going to, but I figured I'd <laughs> you better. That was all right. I think we're having technical difficulties here. I'm going to have to stop the feed. Uh, <laughs> it's that, true. That was my uh, 40th birthday present to myself. Um, I challenged uh, Rick on the stair, the stairmaster, right? And we were doing a vertical mile, so a mile up in stairs. However, 500 some flights that was. And he's what? What are you? Uh, 13, 14 years old. Embarrassed. Younger. That's what I am. <laughs> so he's about 13 14 years younger than i am so we had a contest down in the gym on the the, the and i beat him <laughs> and i've never let him live it down you <laughs> have it. you have it no well done well done fair and square um so i want to just we're halfway through i want to recap in case people have joined and, and missed sort of the uh, sort of the upfront setup for what we've talked about here uh, Nancy, just recap the success, collective success of our of our guests here, if you could. I'm sorry, I just read a post that blew my mind. I've got to just say this. So this is from Donna. Started out barely being able to walk around the block and now walk six to eight miles a day and minus 186 pounds since starting HMR two years ago. Total life-changing process. Sorry, that wow. I was like, whoa. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. On this call. Yeah. <laughs> so here, here, here is here what our guests have yes. accomplished, uh, at least on the scale. What we've heard an awful lot about here are the health and quality of life improvements that you guys And it, it's nice to see the before pictures because, you know, again, it will, as you said, you see people here and, you know, at a certain size, but you have to realize where people were coming from. So I, I love the before. And Tim, you said you still have your pants where um, you now fit. Uh, both yeah, feet are. into one leg, right? Two yeah. legs in one. Yes, I still keep those. Fantastic. <laughs> that's yeah. great. So, and you, and you see Will with his shirt on there. That's great. So the focus um, of, um, of our conversation here is we're really unpacking our Healthy Me revolution and you know, the whole two part process. Everyone wants extraordinary results like what you guys have accomplished and are accomplishing. But in order to do that, you really do need to accept that it's not going to be business as usual in your life. That's not the uh, what, what we're up to here in the development of new lifestyle health habits. You have to do some pretty unusual things given our culture, things that are not typical. You guys have embraced it. And uh, we're inviting our audience to talk. Whoops, he froze here. Uh-oh. All right, so let's, um, we're gonna start, we've got like three big questions that we wanna ask you. And the first one, you know, we've been talking about the environment. Now let's talk more about the, you sometimes run into people that aren't supportive, right? Um, there, there can be pressure. So here's a question, and again, I'll ask it and, and to the audience to please respond as well. But how about have you ever, and I know you have, had people comment, question, criticize or even be offended <laughs> by something that you were doing as part of you practicing your healthy lifestyle. So examples of where you've gotten pressure or negative comments. 
Oh yeah, I got, I got them. Um, I'm sure as everybody else, you know, and in the beginning they used to bother me, uh, you know, and then you come to the realization that a lot of people are saying things out of their own insecurities. And mm -hmm. it, by you having a success, sometimes it shines a light on the fact that they have not had a success. So that's why I think it's nice to be able to say, point to the program and be like, it wasn't because of just me. I found the perfect system for me to succeed in. And so it helps me to direct it towards the HMR program. You guys check it out for yourself. Then they get, it puts it back in their hands. Instead of it being me against you, it's, hey, I actually found something. You're, you're more than welcome to try it and see if it works for you as well, you know? Um, what, are, what are some, Jenny, have you got some specific examples of things people would say to you? Oh, I've had people tell me that, um, oh, well, it's just because you're, um, you haven't reached 50 yet. I heard that a lot. Um, <laughs> oh, it's, it's, um, it's just because uh, my daughter was my health coach, which was actually harder than if it was something <laughs> I didn't know. Um, and so I heard, oh, it's because you got access to your daughter all the time. No, that is incorrect. <laughs> um, I also heard um, my family did it as a whole together. So it was, well, you're not going against, um, you know, your husband or whatever the case was. And really, um, the biggest part was we backed away socially from a lot of the things that we used to do. And we started transitioning from, we don't have to get together to drink and eat. We can get together and do something fun. Mm. And so that created a, some tension with people. And they chose not to be friends and that's fine. It just helped us to learn who our new tribe was. You know, mm. I call them my badass tribe. You know, these are my <laughs> new tribal people who, who are okay with this, you know, they're okay with kind of maybe doing stuff that's not the norm, you know, but creating memories and having fun that don't involve around, you know, eating fat, but it fattening foods and drinking alcohol only, you know, it's like, you, there's so much more of the world to explore out there together, you know, and you just find your people. The, the typical social. Uh, who else who's, who's uh, heard something? I, I've, you know, people that I love dearly and that love me, and I know they do, but they have said, I mean, I know at various points in this, they've come up to me and said, well, don't you think you lost enough weight? I, I mean, you're getting kind of thin now, yeah. maybe I'll mm -hmm. stop, you know? And I'm like, who the heck are you to tell me why my, my ideal weight is? I, why would you even consider, I would never say that to you. Why yeah. would you even think you would say that? I, it just seemed very odd to me. And it, actually, as I'm kind of gaining um, my own power back about this, I'm like, it, it seems odder to me than it used to previously. Mm. Mm. You no, know, I came from a different perspective when, when initially we were talking about this, this, this question and thinking about it. I remember being the one that would look on my Instagram and see people like, you know, doing exercises and seeing their videos and their posts and their pictures and being like, you know, like, hey, this is what I did today. And I'm like, oh, you're so annoying. And I say it to myself, <laughs> like, will you, will you just quit it with the, with the, the pictures? Will you quit it with the, the inspirational quotes? Will you stop all that? It's whatever, you know, like. Then I started to think about for me, when I started my journey, I was like, you know what, not for nothing. Like, I'm not, I, maybe I, I won't post as much as other people did, but I'll make sure my post means something. And I'll make sure what I share is, is to show people that it's not about just me, it's about the support that I'm getting from other people. Because when you realize, like, you know, Jenny, to your, your point, when you realize that there are definitely going to be people who have their comments, have their thoughts who are against you, you start to realize, but there's a whole lot of other people now that I, I am in, I'm plugged into that know what I feel, that know what I was going on, who know what I'm going through. And I can redirect my energy to, to that support than to looking and listening for the negativity. So it, it became almost a, a mindset for me of like, you can say what you want, it doesn't bother me doesn't even affect me because I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for me. Perfect. So say what yeah. you will say yes. what you want, have all the negativity you want about it. Question why I'm doing it. Question the reason for it. That's fine. If we want to have a discussion, we can talk, but if you want to just be negative, you can be negative because I don't hear you. I, I see the people who are supportive. I see the people who are working hard. I see the people who want to keep moving forward. And I'm going to have a whole, like you were saying, I'm going to have a whole lot more fun spending time with them than to listen to all the negative comments because I'm going this way. You can join me if you want to. If you don't, I'll, I'll see you down the road. You know, Healthy, and, healthy and that, you know, revolution, like, right? Yes. I've Absolutely. had some, some Mary, you had some great examples. You have to share your Christmas story about your son or whatever. About. Oh. 
Yeah, about the, my, the, my like the, the non-supportive, uh, <laughs> you have to share I, some of that. Yeah, this is like, brutal. As, as the mom, like I, I would, I'd never got a Christmas stocking. Like I'm a single mom and I get to be in, a, my kids got to be adults. And I made the comment one year, like I, nobody ever does a stocking for me. So I've gotten some people who now do stockings for me. And I got one this year that the only thing in it was candy. Oh. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, you just watched me do this for two years. And, and they literally said, it's a whole stocking full of candy for you. Oh, talk about right over <laughs> the head, right? <laughs> I was like, why? Why? Like, I don't, I don't understand why. And I, I've also had some pushback from, and I haven't had anybody else or heard anybody else talk about this, but the body positivity movement mm -hmm. where, mm. I, I mean, and there, and there is a lot of, of talk and psychology behind that of being okay with whatever size are and skinny doesn't automatically have to mean better and, and the whole idea that you know you that you can be attractive no matter what your size like you, you don't need to equate beauty with skinny um and and so i've i've had some conversations with people around that and they're like well you know you look good and, and congratulations but you know you you were fun, you looked great before and i don't know why you couldn't just yes. be happy with what you were and I found myself sometimes defending my decision to become healthier and mm. putting it in that terms. I'm like, I didn't only do this to lose weight. I was, I was really old, like not chronologically, but behaviors and, and the way, and I was like, I'm too young to be this old. Mm -hmm. And, and I needed to make changes because I didn't want to be that limited. And I didn't want to to not be able to enjoy my life. And so, yes, I enjoy the benefits of, of looking, I think looking better, but I enjoy the benefits of being healthy more. Right. And, and mm -hmm. for me, like that's what it, what it's more about. I have to interject very quickly. Um, Eunicea, if I'm saying her name right, you guys ready for this? Thank you so much for this session tonight. This is my first week and I was debating what I was gonna eat for dinner. Listening to this group, I just made a double shake to stay on track. Thank you. Hey, all right. Incredible. Perfect. That's awesome. So Nancy, this question has resonated uh, that you've asked about other people being uh, you know, critical of you just taking a stand to make some real lifestyle changes. I think uh, Bob Garrison said something that was really interesting. Let's see if I could just find this here. Uh, you know how these, these things disappear on us. Here we are. I have heard many times that it's just not normal to lose weight during the winter holidays. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? What are you crazy losing weight during the holidays? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah, that's so what that. I did phase one was all through the winter holidays. Yep. I started right before, the, right after Thanksgiving. So I, I know yeah. that feeling, you know, right after Thanksgiving, it was like that Sunday was when I was starting. And I, I knew it was coming. And even for Thanksgiving, it was like, all right, I, I know this is coming in a couple of days. Let me not blow it right off the bat. Let me do <laughs> something a little bit better. But like you, you realize, hey, if 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 it's all about the food, well, let's make the food healthy, and then you start to see, well, how does that benefit my fellowship? How does that benefit my time with my family? Yeah. Does it? Is it? Is it the family getting together the most important thing, or is it <laughs> what's on the table? And you start to make those realizations that. It, it could be something simple as like acorn, acorn squash with, with the HMR multigrain in it and, and people are going to eat it if it tastes good. Right. And it doesn't have to be <laughs> the, the fully loaded stuff because you can make it your own and you can yes. do it in a way that it is healthy. And those are the shocking things that you start to, to understand. Like for me, I have a bottle of, uh, I forgot the name. It's, it's the guy who does like the sugar-free like barbecue sauces. And I can't, mm -hmm. the name escapes right oh, now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. He has a jerk seasoning that I had just picked up last week. And I had some just a, a plain just rotisserie chicken breast. And I poured some of that on there. And I'm realizing this is a five calorie sauce that I'm putting on my chicken breast that tastes great. 
Mm-hmm. As opposed to me making my own Dr. Pepper slathered barbecue sauce with all the brown sugar and all the extra stuff in it <laughs> that, that would taste good, but the sauce itself would be probably about five or 600 calories if I actually did the physical <laughs> math too. So you realize flavor doesn't always equate with calories. And you realize that food doesn't always equate with the time that you're having. And the people that you're having it with can dictate what it is to make that event special. And that becomes something that is becomes motivating when you think about like I, I, my key word last time was community when you think about what the community of people who are working together does for you you realize i don't need the negativity i don't need the negative comments i can i can move forward with those who want to work great really really great will yeah so we're really emphasizing this point that you know everyone wants to to produce extraordinary results whether it's with their weight or with their health or their quality of life but they don't fully embrace the fact that you have to really take on doing things very differently to accomplish that. You guys are such ambassadors for that. So many people who are watching are echoing what you guys are saying. Real quick, I'm going to share a survey of 500 people that underscores this disconnect. Are you guys ready? 500 okay. people in this study, okay. when asked, they placed a high value on losing weight while also placing a high value on not needing to make lifestyle changes. <laughs> Tim, Tim, say something about that. What's the problem? Wow. What's thinking? That's, just, well, yeah. That, <laughs> I mean, it's like the definition of insanity. You keep doing yes. this. Yes, bingo. You'll not get other results. So, yeah, um, that's great. You yeah. have to, and one thing I really enjoy about HMR is that it doesn't focus on what you can't do. It focuses on what are some healthy things that you can do. And I really enjoy that focus. That's psychology. I'm a very positive individual. And that has really spoken to me well, because rather than thinking, I can't do that anymore, I can't do that anymore. No, I'm focusing on what are some great alternative things that I can do that I want to fill my life with, Mm because then there's not room for that other crap. Exactly. It's, wow. it's, a, it's the opposite of everything we ever did before with any other diet was deprivation. And this yeah. one is right. that whole concept of more is better. It applies to our physical activity. It applies to food. It applies to everything. And <laughs> it's more of good things, including more quality of life. You know, well, yeah. just the idea that this is a health program or something to get you get you healthy. And one of their great themes is more is better is just talking right. about a revolution. Right, that's mind blowing. <laughs> exactly. No. I remember the doctor that I talked to getting into the program at the clinic. And I remember him saying, well, if you're making the right food choices, then the, the amount of food, that, that just takes care of itself. And I was like, what in God's name is he talking about? <laughs> I, was like, I don't get it. No. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh, and, and people look at me now. I went on vacation this summer, traveled with my sister, saw some cousins, and they looked at me and they were like, you eat a lot. Yes. I, said, I, I know. Isn't it awesome? And I, but I, yep. I can tell you that as a result of that trip, I had, I spent time with a cousin and I didn't see his wife. Nobody had seen his wife in a very, very long time. She didn't socialize with anybody anymore because she really didn't leave home because of how big she had gotten and how she felt about herself. Mm. And I was with him, we were at a restaurant, I was ordering healthy and he started texting his wife. And he says, look at these pictures of Mary, look at what she did. And next thing I knew, he's asking me questions. What's this program you're doing? What's going on? His comment at Christmas was, I got my wife back. Oh. Oh, wow. yay. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Oh, that's great news. Yeah. Hearing oh, that, I speak. Nancy, carrying it forward. I love it. Mm-hmm. Nancy, are you struck by just hearing everyone speak? Oh. You know, we, we, whenever we have guests on, even in the comments, the, the ownership that you guys are taking yeah. on about what you're up to in the program with your lifestyle. It's yeah, just- I love, I love, I really love the fact that you're so proud mm-hmm. that you're going against the normal. Cause I think you, you should be proud of the fact that you are willing to do some things differently from others because mm-hmm. of the difference it's making in your own life. I mean, you know, you're doing it, it's worth it and you own it. And you guys are just great examples of that. Yeah. It's like yep. what we talked about before in the, in the kind of the pre session that we had, it's like, we, we use that term counterculture. 
And then you realize yeah. when you look in the community, it's no longer counterculture. It is this community's culture. And when yes. you're part of this community, you have a shift in your culture. You have a shift in your way of thinking. It's because of this Healthy Me re revolution that you realize that, uh, that what used to be odd is now familiar. And what used to be familiar now is odd. And, mm -hmm. and when you go to those restaurants and you have those days where you might slip up, you have those days where you're like, I, I just want a chicken sandwich from a restaurant and you go inside there and you have it and you sit down and you and you eat it and you think this is going to be enjoyable. And then you get up from the table and you're like, oh, like, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, why did I do that? Why did I just do that? I, I should have I should have gone some I should have just got a meal from my cabinet. I should have just picked <laughs> one of the meals I have in my car. I should have just got the salad instead. And you realize that's the kind of mindset you start having when counterculture becomes culture and culture becomes counterculture. It doesn't feel mm -hmm. right. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel the same. And you don't want to go back to those old habits you have. And you realize mm -hmm. I can make I can make a start, a new start right now. I don't well, have to and, wait until yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, I don't well, have to start all over tomorrow. I can I can do it right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And well, now, for me, it's not even really an emotional thing. I physically feel better when I eat right. Yeah. When I don't, right. I can physically not, I can tell. And it doesn't, so it's got nothing to do with guilt or that my body, no. injury, I just don't feel good. Yeah, our bodies yeah. have amazing Everything. feedback mechanisms built into them that tell us you shouldn't have done that. You know? <laughs> and even, and like, we're all in phase two, we've been doing this for a while. And it's like, you know what, but we're not magical. There's nothing special about us. And, and I will admit to, and this, maybe this helps somebody who's on the call, you know, I, I've slipped up. The holidays yeah. were difficult for me. I must confess that stocking that came my way did not get thrown away. And, <laughs> You know, and I, I had some backsliding and, but the thing is now I'm like, okay, but this program gave me the tools to recognize it and say, you know yes. what, I can stop this. I don't need to backslide 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds. I'm like, okay, you gained 10 or 15 pounds over the holidays and you've got the tools to stop this. So I put myself back in phase one. I'm like, okay, I, I, I've done phase one. Correct it now before it's out of control. And I, I agree completely with that. And I think about um, how my coach used to always talk about motivation and how motivation and willpower, they're not endless. So I've found that accountability has been more effective to me, for me, for my process than willpower or motivation ever was. And so going back every week to um, the classes, whether I've had a bad week or a good week, it gave me that accountability. I always knew at, at my class happens to be on a Monday. I always knew whatever I'm doing on that weekend, I still got to show up Monday and account for what I did, you know? Right. And so it's along the same lines. It gives you that opportunity, that restart to be able to say, okay, I have enough willpower maybe to get me through most of the week. And then I have accountability to firm me up forever. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you have some other people to kind of point out what, what, what could have been your trigger? What is yes. it that would have been yeah. your thing? Yes. About, we're trying to figure, I don't know how it happened. I don't know where it started. And, and just a simple comment, simple question from somebody who's going through it can say, well, did you just have the shakes? No, I, yes, I, got, a, exactly. I got a milkshake from, from McDonald's and thought it would work out. <laughs> I, I, you know, yep. so you realize you have other people who can, can bounce off to, to, to find out, well, what is it that I did? How did I allow myself back in that situation right. so I can look for the things to guard against once again to get, like you said, Mary, to get back yeah. on track yeah. of where you want to be and where you know you could be and where you feel you need to be. And that's that's stay that. in the game if you yeah. always stay in the game like right. you're doing. And, um, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's it's natural to, quote, have bad times or whatever you want to call it. But they're also learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as Will, you're saying, well, I did this, but well, that's what happened. So, you know, you know, over time, you'll do less of it because you've learned. Mary, my guess is, I mean, this was probably your, was this your first holiday at, as a phase two person? First holiday is a phase two. Yeah. And, and so some really, really I, stressful of life events in the last year in our family. And yeah, I, I, mean, I, I recognize it as emotional and comfort and yeah. So, you know, next year may very well be different and there'll probably be some different things that you do as a result of what you've learned this year. You know yep. I mean? It yeah. is, 
that's that's how it works. And I All right. Think we we got to keep going good. here. We got to keep going. We got two more yeah. questions to to wrap it up here. So first of all, I think we've done a good job establishing this 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 underlying premise behind if you're going to achieve the results that you want in the program, the extraordinary results with weight and health, you really do have to embrace this idea of uh, it ain't going to be business as usual. Exactly. I've got to be willing to step in with both feet, especially as to start in phase one to new behaviors, really out of the ordinary thing. So I want to, I want to underscore this a little bit more, guys. I want you to sort of rapid fire. What do we mean when we say doing counterculture lifestyle choices or out of the ordinary behaviors? For example, you know, I'll give you a couple of mine. I'm the one who brings steamed vegetables to the neighborhood pool. And people give me grief for it, but I'm the one who does that. I'm the one who figures out where the gym is when I go on vacation so I can uh, get my exercise in, even though I'm on vacation. So let's just do some rapid fires here. Nancy, give me one. I'm the one who what? Well, I'm the one that uh, went to Louisiana and uh, the gym was closed and it was dangerous to walk outside. And I walked the halls and the stairways to get physical activity in. I love it. Mm. Chime them in, guys. Mary, give I'm, me one. I'm the one who won. I'm the one who makes the fake pina colada from the vanilla shake. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Staying on track. Uh, I'm the one Penny. who turned my vacations into, um, into races. I, I geared all my vacations towards uh, weekend races and um, things like that, and invited others to come with me. Very active. I'm, I'm the one who goes on a two week motorcycle vacation <laughs> and has the two side bags full of HMR food. <laughs> <laughs> worry about what I'm going to eat. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the one who finds the low calorie snacks on Amazon for us to try and, and, and find new things for us to enjoy when we weren't even thinking about it before. Nice. I'm the one who always brings fruit to the party so everybody doesn't even bother to volunteer for it anymore because they know I get really good fruit. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I'm the one who brings a veggie tray. <laughs> I'm the one that gets really excited over fresh green grapes in the grocery store. <laughs> I'm the one, I'm the one who when people say, I know you're not going to eat this, the one that says you're right, I'm not. So don't even don't even bother asking. I'm the one that's gotten to the one. point where they say to me, so shall I not put salad dressing on your salad? Should I leave it on the side? Right. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one who asks for extra veggies at the restaurant and say, bring more than you th than you think. <laughs> when, I'm the one I'm who one, one, everybody I'm, for a group walk or a group run or a group anything, just so that if they're not comfortable, do it. We got everybody from a walker to a runner to very fast runners. We all do it together. Tim, Tim. I'm the one now that if anybody is trying to look for something active to do, they contact me because they know I'm going to know what it is and where it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm the one who goes to the potluck, goes through the line and gets to the vegetables and says, what's everybody else going to eat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who used to pick out every single vegetable out of Chinese food when it came. He now eats vegetarian two to three meals a day every single day mm -hmm. and enjoys it and loves it. I have, a, to, I have one to offer up for um, people who are in phase one. What about this one? What if you're able to say, I'm the one who works really hard to, during the week to lose weight and continue to work hard to be in the box over yes. the week. I'm not giving oh, back yes. the weight that I worked hard to lose <laughs> in the previous five days. Yes. What other ones for phase one guys? And then we'll move on. Phase I'm the one that doesn't one. do a cheat day. Mm. And for phase one, I'm the one that used to have meals between the, my car and my house. So I always had meals somewhere with me. Mm. So you, you weren't going out hungry. I, I would have stuff in the trunk, either bars or, or cereal, pudding, whatever. You would always have that somewhere nearby. It's great. It's yeah. wonderful. I'm, the one, I'm, I'm, one I'm the one who carried around. I'm the one who carried around a little blue bag and everybody got to know yeah. my little blue bag because it had all the food I needed for the day yeah. just in case something happened to me. Yeah. So I always had all my food with me. And I had shaker bottles everywhere. They were at home, they were at work. Yes. They were yes. uh, all right. I'm the one who turned my summer vacation to a driving trip instead of flying because it was easier to bring all my food that way. Wow, <laughs> fantastic. Oh, these are great answers.
I hope our audience is getting the sense that we could go on all night with the I'm the ones. Um, We're getting a lot of positive things here. Yeah. And people in the audience are sharing too. So guys, I'd, I'd like all of us to walk in the shoes of a particular person who might be watching this either live or, or after the fact, who's watching all of you and who's saying, boy, they're so enthusiastic about embracing these changes that are really hard to make. Um, I just am not feeling that way. So now I want to ask one final question. Going counterculture, living your healthy me revolution, however you want to describe it, doing things that are so unusual in our culture. Why, guys, is it worth it? Talk to us about why it's worth it to embrace going counterculture with your health habits. It was worth it for me because I didn't even know what I was capable of. I who I was before HMR, um, I had value in my life. I had positivity. I had purpose, but it was centered around things exterior to me. Like I was trying to accomplish things um, that would help other people. And that's more or less so. When I, after HMR, I realized this one little thing that was so impossible in my mind to lose the weight, it made it possible. And it made me realize, well, all these other things that I thought were so impossible for me to do, maybe they are possible. And I think that's part of the reason why I become so obsessed with obstacle course races is it looks like it's impossible to go 14 miles in cold weather, you know, 30 some obstacles, you know, six hours, whatever it is. It seems so impossible when it, I just can't keep that same mindset of HMR, just take it one step at a time, you know, and all these things that seem so huge to me, great for others, huge for me all of a sudden there's possibilities and I'm, I'm so much more open to life and everything it has to offer now than I did before, before I was just kind of existing and, and I was encouraging others to do things, but I myself thought and only in what I couldn't do. And now I think about what I can do, you know, and it's, it's, it's just amazing. I'm so much happier with myself and that makes my relationships with other people so much better. We hear it. Yeah. We hear it. That's so amazing. Wow. Tim. I, I, start, I thought that I had gotten to an age in my life where I, there were certain things I just couldn't do anymore. Oh. And by getting healthier, I am realizing that I can not only do those things, but I'm actually exploring new things that I can do. Things as simple as getting under the sink to adjust the faucet or something. I was so big, I couldn't do that comfortably. Now I can do any repair around the house that I, that I could possibly be challenged with. Um, I can walk my dog further than one block and feel okay about that. I'm running, I'm trying hiking now, which I never did before. Oh, yeah. I am trying new things that I never thought I would do. And it's just so great to feel that way and to have that open to me. Oh, awesome, Tim. It's just awesome. Yeah. Ah. Mary. I kind of connect to what Jenny said, where before I was just sort of existing and now I'm living. And so for me, it was about, it, it's as much about the mental health aspect. So the getting healthy, I think has changed my, my mental health and has made me reconsider many, many things um, and think about what am I no longer willing to tolerate? Uh, that's contributing to the stress in my life. And so like the, the revolution of losing weight and getting healthier, getting my knee replacement and you know, getting physically healthier has now led me to become mentally healthier, emotionally healthier, and to start making some other revolutionary changes. Like, you know what? I don't need the stress of, of maybe what I'm doing for a living and contemplate making a change there. I, I just, it's a whole different mindset of what I deserve and, and what I will tolerate and what's acceptable for me to be living a healthy life at this point in my life. Exactly. So well said. Yeah. So well said. And there's a, there's a difference in, in the smile. Yes. There's a difference in the conversations you have. Um, and, and it's, it's hard to kind of explain, it's hard to kind of pinpoint it unless you're going through it. Cause you can smile, you can show happiness 
and sometimes that can be just for the camera and and now even sitting in your solitude you can smile you can think about the fact that man i look forward to things i look forward to the plans that could be made i look forward to the conversations that could be had i look forward to sharing in the new experiences that can take place and and, and jenny what you were saying before kind of really hit me and resonated with me because there were things not even so much that I couldn't do, I wouldn't even think about wanting to do. Exactly. That, yes. that becomes the change in mindset of like, all right, I might not be able to do it now, but I'm pushing myself to get to that point. And yeah. that is something that is a, a, a shift that can take place. You can realize you can cook things differently, still have flavor, still taste great and be healthier for you. You can do things outside of the realm of just being around a meal, but doing an activity. You can look forward to those longer distances. I mentioned, and a lot of people talked about, you know, uh, my Disney trip. I'm looking forward to the next time of going. I'm looking forward to what can take place. I'm looking forward to all of those things. And I think this change in mindset and being counterculture, and like I mentioned, having the counterculture become your culture allows you to see things in a whole different way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just like your eyes are opened. Yeah. Absolutely. So good, Will. Mm. And guys, all of you, so good. Uh, each <laughs> of you, and I have to include, People who are watching, you guys are all such great examples oh, of yeah, fabulous comments. how you can use the HMR program to really engage in, in new and different behaviors to get these remarkable changes that you've been sharing uh, and, and you're experiencing in your lives. You guys really are part of our Healthy Me revolution. So thank you. Thank you for your comments tonight. We really wanted to shine the light on how these new and different behaviors aren't supported by the culture and they're often not supported by some of the people in your lives. They take commitment, they take resolve, they, sometimes they take tolerance, Yes. but the changes are worth it. So yeah. to our audience, we hope that this conversation tonight will help you to maybe take even more ownership over the lifestyle changes you're making. And maybe Nancy, to use your term, take even a little more pride because you deserve it over the lifestyle changes that you're yeah. underway with HMR. So thank you for watching. And guys, thank you for joining us for this conversation tonight. It's been really tremendous. fabulous to have you all. Really Thanks. fabulous. Yeah. <gasps> we'll be back next week with another event. So uh, we will see everyone in a week. But uh, until then, have a great week, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody. Good night. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.